This is the latest synthesizer clone by Behringer, the Pro 1. Sequentials Pro 1 had the name spelled out in words and the keyboard is supposed to be effectively a single voice of the Prophet 5. Behringer made approximately a two-thirds scale desktop with no keyboard and at a wonderful budget price so let's have a look through the facilities and see how they compare to the original. On the left is this modulation matrix with three sources and many alternative destinations. We'll look at that a bit later but starting first in the normal signal flow the two oscillators A and B and one wonderful thing about the Pro 1 on the original and on this is that you have a simple drone mode to hold the sound on. That's not something that you find on the Mini Moog or Behringer's Model D and it's a shame because it makes it less easy to set up a constant sound texture. On this if we put the drone back on we can see the oscillator waveform and octave switching. So you have there a sawtooth wave and a square wave you can alter the pulse width. And now using the small mixer section let's look at the second oscillator and the white noise. So that's exactly as on the original keyboard. On the second oscillator you can set it to low frequency and stop the keyboard from playing it. So that becomes a second LFO. We'll look at the possibilities of that in a moment. Then there's a conventional low pass filter with envelope and of course the audio envelope. Let's look at the filter first. It's a nice smooth 24 decibels per octave low pass cutoff. Now we look what happens when we turn up the resonance. As you can hear just in those early stages, a lot of the bass and some of the volume disappears as you turn up the resonance. This is quite faithful to the original, so without a high pass filter being added, it means that you can make slightly thinner sounds which might cut better in a mix. Then as you turn up the resonance more, the filter will fully resonate. As usual you have the envelope amount affecting the filter and the keyboard tracking amount will connect the keyboard in a moment. The envelopes are quite conventional ADSR but if we look back to the drone switch you'll also find a switch to re-trigger the envelopes repeating at the speed of the LFO.
that immediately gives you a lot of possibilities for sequencer type patterns but there's a lot more on the Pro 1 as there's a two pattern sequencer and an arpeggiator as well. We'll look at those more in a moment after connecting a MIDI input which is on the top panel. Oscillator A also features a sync mode which will give you harmonic bending when you change the pitch. And if you can find the setup that also works using the modulation wheel. There's a glide facility on the oscillators. If we turn this up we'll hear a long portamento between notes. In normal mode this plays all the time and in auto mode it only works if you play legato. Here's the legato mode called auto. Nothing happening if you let go of each key as you play it, but glide if you play legato. Now with a MIDI keyboard connected into the top panel MIDI input you can hear the effect of playing while you have this repeated envelope. Let's have a look now at the arpeggiator which has two modes, up or up down. Here's the up mode. And the up down mode. In addition to the envelope repeat in the arpeggiator you have a two pattern step time sequencer. Let's look at one of the sequences I've put in. So that's maybe a typical electro pop bass line and that will transpose from an external keyboard. sequence is quite versatile. It will also help you make this kind of fast high pitch pattern people often do on the EMS Synthia AKS keyboard. Now this version of Pro 1, as on the original, has an external audio input which has an input level in the mixer which it shares with the white noise. But this input is also looked at by the arpeggiator and sequencer and it can handle a wide range of input signals, not just a click or a clock but something like a bass drum on tape. So this sequencer and arpeggiator can be synchronized to a wide range of external signals and you can use the synthesizer sound to add to or replace 
a lot of possible sounds, including maybe percussion sounds. And even things like bass drums. Let's have a look now at what we left to last, this quite complex and versatile modulation section. The filter envelope voltage, or the voltage coming out of oscillator B, or the voltage coming out of the LFO, can be sent either via a modulation wheel of your connected keyboard, or directly to the frequency and pulse width of oscillator A, the frequency and pulse width of oscillator B, and the filter. Now that's quite a lot of possibilities and we'll just show a few of these modulated noises. If oscillator B is in the normal audio mode you tend to get fast metallic ring modulator type noises and if it's in LFO mode along with the normal LFO you can get quite complex double modulated passages. Now you'll note that although the Pro 1, as on the original design, has a white noise source, there's no sample and hold to give you random modulation. But when you use the double LFO mode as we just heard, you can get quite complex patterns which sound as if they're completely random. There's just one switch which we haven't looked at, discreetly inserted into the mode section. It's the first one for poly or mono playing. And this refers to the chain mode, which allows you to chain up to 16 Pro 1 modules for polyphonic playing. On the subject of this being a module, you can of course take this out of its chassis and mount it in a Euro rack format. And for this purpose, Behringer has added a lot of patch points on the top. Some of these existed on the original Pro 1, but most of them are added. So you have the output of the modulation wheel converted to a voltage, and you have gate and clock ins, an alternative access to the LFO speed by a CV, the LFO out, keyboard, CV and gate out, that external audio input that we mentioned, an audio mixer out bypassing the filter, and voltage control of the filter cutoff and resonance, as well as voltage outputs of the filter and amp envelopes. You have a headphones output as a mini jack 
here on the top and the mini jack audio out the quarter inch audio out is on the back along with the MIDI through and the input for the small power supply. On the back panel the Pro One also has dip switches to select your MIDI channel and a USB connector. The Pro One comes at an affordable price and anybody who owned the original by Sequential will be happy to see all the facilities there and an authentic sound. There's nothing added in the way of memories or a high pass filter or effects but the cost is so affordable that you can easily add effects and more modulation using the inputs and outputs in the Eurorack format. So another big success for Behringer an alternative choice to their Model D clone of the Mini Moog and the Odyssey clone of the ARP model and the Neutron which is a even more flexible semi-modular original synthesizer design. There's also more affordable modules such as Crave which is again semi-modular and there's a K2 version of the Korg MS-20 which roughly competes with this Pro 1 as it is a two oscillator monophonic design. But this Pro 1 can be recommended to almost anybody. It's good for bass parts and cutting lead line parts. It's good for abstract and modulated sounds and it's excellent for interfacing to a Eurorack format. We'll just finish with a few more sounds. Wow. Mm -hmm.